big, big questions, obviously, at tackle. And, uh, you know, we, we've got a nice, uh, really healthy competition going on right now between, between the two tackles, um, between um, Ethan Card, uh, Landon Peterson, Josh Berger, and then Caleb Rogers, the freshman, um, is really, really putting on a good camp. Uh, it's, it's exciting as we've gotten into pads to watch him handle that. Uh, he's done a nice job. Ethan Card um, is a kid that was with us this spring, and he's just gotten, literally gotten better every day, which has been fun to watch. Uh, and then, then you got the returner in Zach Adams, who's, who's just staying consistent and battling his tail end off. So really, it's, it's a five, six-man race in there um, of guys repping at, at tackle. And uh, obviously, these scrimmages coming up are going to be huge to, to determine you know, who gets what playing time. Um, at guard, obviously from guard to center and guard, you know, you were turning Weston and Dawson Deaton and Jack Anderson, so we feel like we've got a, a talented bunch of guys there. Uh, the exciting part is uh, um, Will Farah has really come on, come into his own. He's, he's doing some really, really, really nice things. Um, on top of Will, you've got um, uh, Casey Verhulst, who's, who's been doing a really nice job for us. Um, and has really become a guy that can bounce around um, throughout the line um, with, with ease, um, whether it's playing right or left, guard or tackle, and has been a guy we've been able to just count on. Uh, Will's a guy that, you know, depending on the day, you know, I, I mean, one of our biggest things with Coach Yost and our offense is we're going to be very multiple. If you came out to watch us practice, you would have a hard time figuring out who's who. We've got multiple depth charts every every week. We have a different depth chart per uh, per drill. And the reason for that is we want guys to learn the offense as a whole. Uh, you know, I don't think there's a lot of value in having a guy that can just play, you know, left guard or just play left tackle. We, we want guys to be able to understand the offense and, um, you know, injuries and all the things you don't foresee uh, in the future, being able to move guys around. Because at the end of the day, on any given Saturday, we want to make sure we have our best five. And it's, good, it's a good group. Right now, I feel like we've got nine, 10 guys that are in that two deep that all are guys that, you know, if they started for you tomorrow, you're feeling pretty good about it. Obviously, just off name alone, we know the importance of Jack Anderson, but truly state how important was it for him to come back, knowing he probably could have gone to the draft and been drafted? Oh, yeah, it's all, I mean, you got a great player willing to come back, play for his university. That, that's a great deal. Um, you know, he's, he's gotten better every day uh, since he's made that decision. You know, it's not like he's uh, sitting here and going to be the same guy next year. I, I really feel like he's making some strides. Obviously, we had the injury last year. But since he's gotten back from that shoulder and as that thing has, uh, has gotten back to 100%, it's, it's just the little things. His footwork and the pass, uh, you know, pass protection. You know, we're repping, repping him at center. And I tell him every day we do it, man, I'm, we're making you money, so you need to thank me you know, when this whole thing's over. And you, he's getting comfortable playing the left side, right side. And it's just making him more valuable as we move forward. And that's a credit to him having the willingness to work and the willingness to grow at this point in his career. All right, we'll go to John Sokoloff. Coach, uh, I'm sorry, my uh, imp- We may not go to John Sokoloff. I think he's having internet issues. All right, we'll go to Billy Watson in the meantime. Hey, Coach, uh, as far as you, you guys returning, for you, uh, how has it just been getting to see back the guys, especially just with the whole uh, coronavirus thing right now? Oh, you know, big part of my life is being around these guys. You know, I missed, heck, I missed doing the high school summer camps. You know, I missed being around just football. And so, you know, I've I, you know, been tickled to be back with these guys and uh, just enjoy being around them where, you know, we're able – We've moved some meeting room spaces around, so we're meeting in a big room uh, that's not necessarily our old line room, uh, and it, you know, it's just so much nicer than than being on the Zoom and having all the internet issues that we just saw there. Uh, that's what we've had since March, uh, trying to run position meeting rooms, and you know, your films pausing up or freezing, not streaming properly, and uh, it's just nice to be all together, stink together, hang out together, eat together, 
Um, obviously, we're practicing social distancing and all those things. The first time in my life I've coached with a mask on. Uh, all those challenges, but hey, that's going on across the country, and that's, it's part of it. Just grateful to be back playing football. Goes to Carlos Silva. Hey, Coach, just uh, wanted to ask you, just coming out of this unprecedented offseason, do you see any guys that may have been maybe not as, I guess, in shape as you might have been, and how long did you feel like that took to acclimate them back to football shape, if you will, or, or were they about, where were you about they would be? You know what, what we found, and, and Coach Wells and Coach Scholes had a great plan for the kids, but bottom line is the kids executed the plan. Um, what, you know, I can tell you some stories. Landon Peterson goes to Lowe's. His dad texts me pictures of it and builds his own squat rack for the garage. Um, you know, uh, Will Ferrer drives to Houston, which is where he's from, picks up a weight set and has it in his garage here in town. I mean, I, I've seen guys do some things that are pretty impressive as far as just finding ways to work out and, and stay in shape. We did things like audio files where we uh, did some voiceover stuff so they could put their iPods or headsets on and go out and run our offense with us, you know, making the play calls and doing all those so you're emulating at least getting yourself in a football mode. Um, Coach Scholes did a great job with the body weight circuits and, and all those things that he had them do even for guys who didn't have weight sets, which is really difficult if you're an old lineman, uh, you know, to be able to get your squat and those things. So to answer your question, Carlos, I, I think we're on the other end of that thing. I really felt like our kids did a, an a, un, unbelievable job. It, it matter, I mean, it's kind of unbelievable to be frank with you. Go ahead, Carlos. Last one for me, I guess from your perspective, just kind of seeing all the guys that Yeah, just the knowledge of the offense. That's been the one thing we've really stressed. You know, last year there were some things we just simply couldn't do, whether it be in the run game or the protection game. So there's some new protections we've added. There's a couple of new runs that we've been able to add. And it's frankly because of the amount of time we've been able to spend with them and their willingness to be active participants in a Zoom meeting, right? Because you can be in a Zoom meeting and be doing 9 million other things. and. Uh, you know, our guys have, have bought in, they've been locked in, and I think that's what I'm hoping shows this fall is some of the additional things we've been able to add to our offense, whether it be a couple more runs, whether it be a couple protections to help change some things up and just take some, you know, when you can change the protections, um, it allows you to just keep ahead of the defense based on their pressures. They can't just scheme a, sense, a single protection and those types of things. So. I'm excited about it. I think it was time well spent. Obviously, it was a very tough time for all of us um, across the country. So, uh, but glad to have him back. All right, we'll try John Sokoloff again. Hey, Coach, uh, you got me? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry. Uh, last time my stuff wasn't uh, exactly well working. Apologies if you mentioned this uh, four minutes ago, but I just kind of wanted to talk about Jack a little bit more specifically about the tools that you see from him and whether or not. Oh, he's definitely going to be an effective pro. Um, he's got the ability to sink his hips, naturally bend, and which allows you to have great leverage. Um, he, he's a violent striker, so on contact, he's he's violent with his hands. He he's naturally rolls his hips through the blocks. Uh, he's got tremendous balance, great feet. Um, you know, he's a guy that, frankly, I think he's learned more and more football. Uh, as, as he's been here, which has been good for him to, uh, you know, squeeze it out of himself and not just learn what the guards know. You know, I, th I think if you sit down and talk with him, he might surprise you with the information he could spit out as far as what a tackle and a center needs to do. Um, but, yeah, it, you know, he's just his, – his ability to bend, his, his strength when he's bent, uh, you know, with his ankle flexion, his hip flexion, in my opinion, is what separates him from most guys. Goes to John Williams. Nervous? Does it make an offensive line coach to have to replace one tackle that started 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's a challenge. Obviously, we've got some kids in here that are battling their tails off. Um, you know, it's no different than when you're changing quarterbacks or changing tail. I mean, it just, it's challenging, obviously nerve-wracking. Those two guys are were obviously great players because they're both playing in the NFL right now. I mean, Travis is doing well at Green Bay, and, and Terrence is doing a great job there in Dallas. And uh, so, yeah, great challenge. It, it makes you nervous. It's a couple sleep, sleepless nights. And, uh, you know, just trying – I think we've got talent to do it. It's just the understanding of the urgency every snap and what it means to play tackle when you're when you're willing to push the ball down the field, throw the ball, and protect the passer. Getting those young guys to understand that. And a couple of weeks or maybe ten days to go, when y'all got started, Matt mentioned that he liked the OTAs. He said he would even take some of those over spring practice. Um, how has it changed what you have done with your offense? Sure. One of the things that I think we've done a better job as, as O-line coaches and, and is we've spent more time teaching the individual drills and getting the kids to understand, hey, when I'm hitting the Crowther, it's like when we're calling a tag on inside zone and that footwork that we use. And it's just, you know, spending more time in the actual drills and being more efficient with the drills. I mean, often I've, I've always film the drills. Rarely have I had time to watch the drills with the players in meetings. The biggest thing they've given me is a chance to go out there and film them doing some things. And then when they come in here, hey, well, let's watch our individual and let's get better in that area. Usually we're spending so much time watching the plays, talking scheme, just to get caught up. Now we're, we're spending more time developing the technique. And I, I'm hoping we'll see, um, see some positives out of that. Billy Lawson. Coach, uh, Matt Wells mentioned last time that uh, recruiting was kind of a fun thing, a fun deal to deal with with uh, Zoom and FaceTime with all those really good uh, recruits. Uh, for you, how's, been, how's recruiting been on your end of the table and uh, what's been the most uh, challenging part? Oh, just um, recognizing when they opened up everything for the Zoom stuff and using unlimited calls and realizing that, shoot, I could do a home visit with a junior's family in April and May, um, that, that's kind of been the game changer. Because normally that time of the year we're out on the road, um, we're seeing them at the schools, but you know, watching them practice, but we're not spending any time with their families. Uh, I feel like I'm further ahead with the 21 kids' families, simply because I've sat there with them on the Zoom, looked in their houses, and kind of seeing mom or dad or little brother, little sister, and kind of have a better, better feeling for where they're coming from and what they might be about. Just, you know, you look into someone's homes, you kind of see, you know, where they're coming from, you know, whether, um, you know, challenges or whether it's wealth, whatever it is, you just got to, you know, a little peek into what, what's made them who they are at that point in their life. And uh, so that, that's actually been a positive deal. And it's been nice because I've kind of gotten to know some parents really well. And I'm hoping that pays dividends as we move forward. Go to Eric Kelly, then we'll end with Don Williams. Christian Josh Berger is one of the guys coming for a slot. How does someone, especially on the offensive line, go from Wofford to Texas Tech be able to play at both those levels? Yeah, I mean, we uh, heard about Josh. We pulled up his Clemson game. We watched him play against Clemson, and it was really, really good. Um, so we felt good about it. And he's come in here and it has shown that he can play at this level. I mean, that's, um, you know, there's good players at, at every level and uh, just need to make sure you're finding the right ones. And, and we certainly hope we have one in Josh. Uh, he's a quick twitch kid. He's uh, not as tall as some of our guys, um, but he makes up for that in his quickness. He makes up for that in his ability to use his leverage and run his feet. He uh, has shown through some of the games we watch to be able to handle some longer athletes, you know, some defensive ends. I mean, Clemson's got a pretty good outfit, and he handled those guys at, at a high level. So uh, 
certainly hopeful that he can come in here. And it's, it is different doing it one time versus Clemson in a year than doing it nine times in the Big 12. And uh, hopefully, you know, what a great challenge for him. He got his degree early, had that opportunity. That's a great thing about that rule. And then, obviously, in the moment, you never want injuries to happen. But you guys did have some injuries at significant spots last year. Terrence Crowley with Jack, obviously, was one that we know about. Can you see the dividends of some of those guys having gotten game time when you go through camp this year and they were more confident? Oh, Weston Wright, a, a perfect example of that. Weston, don't forget, when we went into season, I mean, he was a two-deep guy that, um, frankly, was just a guy needing to grow up. Uh, Jack goes down, and I really feel by the end of the end of the season last year, um, he's one of the more premier guards in the Big 12, and uh, I, I still believe that coming back. I think he's he's a really really talented young man, uh, and he's got confidence now because of what he what the opportunity to play. I think he started eight games last year for us, um, and, and I, I believe that's you know. Well, only help him moving forward. I, I'm excited to see what kind of year he can put together. I think we're going to be really talented inside, and we just need those tackles to play at their 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 capability. You know, just maximize their talents. If they do that, we'll be in really good shape. All right, John finishes up here. Um, I guess uh, among those tackles, who of those guys seems like the best? shows the most natural talent as a pass protector and who uh, seems like the most physical guy? Yeah, um, I would say right now, um, today, uh, you know, Josh is probably the more physical of the bunch. Um, pass protector, Ethan. Ethan didn't have a good day. I'm coming off the practice field. I, in my mind, he didn't have a great day today. Yesterday, he did. Um, you know, uh, I really think those two do, those two guys have strengths in those areas. Um, you know, Ethan, we just need to keep working on him playing more physical. Uh, Josh, we just, you know, there's some things we do unique in our pass protection that uh, we just got to get him in those habits of doing it. Um, Landon Peterson's just kind of an all-around guy. I mean, he's very capable of both run and pass. Go ahead. Tom. I didn't mean to. Sorry. No, that's fine. And I was going to say also, uh, Matt mentioned, um, Last week, I think, you said that the guys that you had working at left tackle were going to flip over to right. The guys sure. working at right tackle were going to flip over to left. Or, or you all started that process this week? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we've uh, – you know, we flipped them. I mean, Josh last week was playing – Berger was playing left tackle this week. He's bumped over to right. Um, Card was playing a little bit of guard and some tackle. He's playing mostly left tackle now. Um, you know, I'm just kind of looking at the day. Zach Adams has moved over, playing more right tackle at this point. So, yes, we have. Just looking to, you know, allow these guys to settle in and play the best five. I remember uh, in vision of David Ghost back this summer, a couple of three months ago, the one thing that he seemed most uh, – seemed to have the most conviction about at that point was that Casey seemed like uh, – more likely as a right tackle guy, you seem to like him yeah. there uh, most. Is that still fair to say? Absolutely. The thing that Casey's done a little bit to help, in my opinion, just help him be more valuable and play more, is we have moved him inside a little bit, and he's handled that well up to this point. So um, that, that just adds value to you, man. The more you can do, um, you know, the better off you are. Uh, I think ever since the off season, I mean, I knew something for me as a center. I mean, last year I played around – 295, 300, and I know I have to get my weight up for some of the bigger nose guards we play. And that's something I've been working on. I've been trying to get stronger in the weight room, get uh, better movement in the run game. So that's something I've been focusing on all off season and something I've definitely uh, seen some improvement in with these uh, first couple practices. You said uh, Coach Farmer said some guys were doing what? Uh, just some unique workouts like uh, that, I believe. Uh, he 
said some would go to Lowe's and make their own way bars or some, something like that. I don't know if you did anything kind of like that or, or anything different. Okay. Uh, yeah, during quarantine, obviously, uh, the gyms were shut down. I was actually lucky. Uh, my dad has a good friend who owns a CrossFit gym, so he was kind of able to let me in early in the morning when no one else was there. And so I was, a, I was never really without a gym uh, throughout quarantine, and that really helped me, like I said earlier, with the strength I was trying to gain and uh, putting on muscle through the offseason. But, yeah, a lot of guys on the O-line were, like, building their own sets. Guys were, like, working out in their houses, like, having to get creative for sure. But I was lucky, so I didn't have to do that. Oh, it's huge. I mean, it just shows the commitment. Um, I mean, I know a lot of other guys on the team were doing stuff like that, but I mean, especially in the O-line room, like I know, for example, uh, Will Farah drove all the way to Houston, picked up a weight set, drove all the way back to Lubbock and put it in his backyard. And a bunch of other dudes on the O-line drove back to Lubbock to work out in his backyard. So, I mean, that just kind of shows uh, how committed everybody is, how everyone wanted to get better. And I mean, they're passing up time at home with their families and came up and uh, we're grinding in his backyard. So it was a pretty cool thing to see for sure. Go to Eric Kelly. Dawson, how much more confident are you now as opposed to where you were last season in terms of being maybe that vocal leader for the offensive line to the center, the guy who kind of drives things a little? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's obvious, or it's gone up a lot. I uh, realized the uh, role I have to play as a leader, especially with, uh, I mean, we had two senior captains, Terrence and Travis on the outside, and they were all, always the guys leading, and I was kind of the younger guy sitting back and watching them, but I mean, now since they graduated, and especially me being a center, where I have to give all the calls, I'm in charge of the whole line, so I mean, that's been something I've been working on a lot, just uh, coming into that role and getting the guys to respect me and lead them as best as I can. Uh, yeah, usually we obviously get the three non-conference games and I mean, we, we get to scrimmage in fall camp, but we never get to get the full live bullets flying feeling. And I mean, sometimes in the non-conference games, we get to gel a little more and just kind of get used to playing with each other, communicating all that stuff. But I mean, uh, I'm not worried about it. I mean, I think we'll still be in the same place. We've had a lot of extra walkthroughs. We've had a lot of extra practices and uh, now we're putting on the pad, so I'm really comfortable with where we are as an O-line, and I think we're uh, way further ahead than we were at this time last year. Go to John Sokoloff. Hey, Dawson. Uh, I was just going to ask, uh, what's it like kind of playing next to a, a guy like Jack? And, uh, I mean, how much have you all two kind of had to step up in a leadership role considering everyone else uh, who left, obviously, the O-line? Yeah. Uh, yeah, with Terrence and Bruffy leaving, I mean, me and Jack, uh, two returning starters. I mean, Jack was hurt and didn't play a lot last year, and Weston's also a guy returning. So just being the three on the interior and knowing uh, we got to help develop our tackles, get them ready to play, and all that stuff, it's something we've all three talked to each other about and something we've been focusing on the whole offseason, just being with those guys, watching tape with them, making sure they're doing everything they need to in the weight room and everything like that. and. I think it's paid off big time. We'll go back to John Dillon real quick. Dawson, uh, where are you on your way right now? And what, which of the younger players have you been taking under your wing and trying to guide them? You said my weight right now? Yeah, where's your, where's your weight right now? You said you were trying to, to get it up from 295 to get some of the heavier nose tackles. Where's your weight right now? Uh, I'm I'm around 305 right now, and we still got another month until season. So I'm just trying to keep piling on weight, and obviously keep on going through the season, putting on weight rather than last year when th throughout the season I was losing weight. So I just need to do that, and I know it'll help my game a lot. We'll go to Don Williams. So Dawson, 
Obviously, you've known Jack longer than pretty much anybody on the team, I assume. Uh, what do you think this last year, year and a half, has been like for him, considering that he missed, he was pretty much out last spring, and then you only got to play him on three games this past season, and then was down, going to be down this spring again. Uh, what's, what do you think that experience has been like for him, just all the time that he has been off the field? Uh, I mean, I know it kills him. I mean, we talk every day. We talk all the time. I know he wants to be out there practicing with us. And I mean, I know it hurts him that he can't. And uh, I know it really, uh, he, he, he was really sad whenever he obviously got hurt last year and wasn't able to finish the season. And obviously, that messed up with his plans and his future. But I mean, he's always had a good uh, work ethic in the training room. I always see him in there grinding, trying to get back as soon as he can. And, I mean, I think he's ready to have a really good year this year. And during that quarantine period, during all that downtime when guys were kind of, got, kind of gone their separate ways, since you had alluded a moment ago to uh, being kind of a leader now, being the guy that's responsible for having everybody on the same page, when you were apart, what was the communication like among the offensive line? Uh, we would. Each of us had a dude on the O-line. We'd check in with each day, like a guy or two. And we'd just be like, hey, how'd your workout go? Where'd you go work out? Just kind of holding each other accountable, that kind of stuff. And dudes we know on the team who had to gain weight, we'd ask them how their weight is. Same with guys who had to lose weight. So I mean, it was hard since we were all in different parts of the country, just scattered apart. But I mean, I think we did a really good job I'm, between us on the O-line ourselves. and. Coach Farmer, Coach Wells, Coach Scholes, all of them checking in on us, giving us workouts to do. I think we had an awesome plan throughout all of quarantine. And I think uh, we were able to really see it when we all came back. And uh, some guys put on a lot of weight who needed to. Some guys lost a lot of weight. And a lot of dudes looked stronger. So I think we did a really good job over quarantine as an O-line and as a team in general. So uh, you and Jack and Weston are kind of returning veterans or starters in that group. Um, outside of you three, who is an offensive lineman to watch that people have not seen or seen much of yet that you think is going to step forward and, uh, and be a big factor this year? I mean, a lot of guys who've been doing a lot of good things at tackle since we've been in camp. I mean, Zach Adams, he's been here a while. He knows the offense. He's ready to go. I mean, he's kind of like Jack, had to deal with some injury setbacks. And then uh, Caleb's been doing really good. He's a true freshman who just came in in the summer. I mean, he's been on top of the playbook. I mean, he, he's had very few mental errors, and that just really speaks to how dedicated he is and uh, how he wants to get on the field soon. And then uh, another guy, Josh Berger, he transferred in from Wofford. And I mean, he's the same way. He learned the playbook really fast. He's, I mean, he's a guy who's played a lot of college football. So I mean, we've been able to learn things from him, too. And I mean, uh, those three guys have stepped up a lot and have been playing really well this camp. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely just playing more positions than I've ever played, being center, both guards. I can play some tackle. I can really play whatever. So the versatility piece of it is huge, but also the, I mean, just, just the mental part of it, learning more about coverages, defenses, those type of things, being more comfortable out there. Obviously, I played a lot of ball, so I know a lot about that, but it never hurts to to do that, learn more about it. And the last part is just the leadership piece. I mean, I think I've taken a big step in that and being more vocal with my teammates and trying to be more of a vocal leader, not just with my actions. Goes to John Sokoloff. Hey, Jack. Uh, any other, like, adjustments that, uh, you know, like you're making to your game and also just kind of how eager are you to finally get back out there healthy and, like, uh, and improve more to, you know, those NFL scouts and such? Yeah, uh, I'd say what I'm improving specifically in my game. I mean, it's all the same O-line stuff, hands, feet. I just want to play super aggressive this year. I want to get a lot of knockdowns. I'm going to be just be an enforcer, a bouncer out there. And I think that's what I'm, uh, what I'm working towards. What was the second part again? You're muted. I got it. How much of a chip is kind of on your shoulder mm. to get back out there now? Yeah, big time. No, I'm really excited. Like. I just had a bad taste in my mouth, still do, from that OU game and the injury that I sustained and whatnot. So now I'm definitely ready to go out there and just be healthy and confident and just get back to the ball I was playing. We'll go to Bill Mayer. Hey, Jack. Um, how much were you able to sort of gauge learning from, uh, from watching games on the sideline after your injury? How much did that sort of help you? Or in what way? Uh, 
I'd say it helped in the in the piece of just being there, being there for my teammates. I wouldn't say I mean I got a better grasp of the offense, obviously, but I was pretty comfortable in it already. So I think more than anything, it was just being there for my teammates and having someone that has played a lot of ball like myself for someone like Wesson Wright that can come up to me on the sideline and say, I'm seeing this. Can you help me? What would you do? Uh, a lot of that. And like, yeah, seeing seeing ball from that from the sidelines a lot different than what I was used to my first three. It was like first 28 games or whatever that I started in. So, I mean, it, it was good to, I wouldn't say good, but it, I got I got some positive work out of it with, the, with just getting mental reps. The D line. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're making a lot of strides also in that room. They got, uh, I think, Tony Bradford's a guy that's going to be going to be really good here. Uh, Gilbert is getting in there, getting a lot of reps. Uh, Devin Drew's getting a lot of reps. Jalen Hutchings is making a lot of steps. Uh, he wants to be one of the best DTs in this league, best nose guards in this league. He's a super hard worker, dude. Really goes in the weight room and. And grinds, and you know, I think the D line is going to make a lot of strides for sure. And Eli has always been a guy that I've respected to the utmost. The dude works so hard, and he's played a lot of ball as well. So, just a guy who's a former walk-on like Eli, being out there and being able to have a, have good years back to back like he had, I think he's ready to have a breakout year. Go to Carlos Silva. Hey Jack, I know you talked a little bit about it, but when did you kind of feel 100 percent healthier that, that you felt kind of? After that injury and with this unprecedented offseason, I know a lot of the players you've spoken to have mentioned how helpful these Zoom meetings are just because you've been able to talk to the coaches more. How much has that helped you just either talking to them a little bit more or maybe looking at plays more than maybe you would have throughout the offseason compared to some other ones? Yeah, I feel like we got a lot of Zoom meeting time, like you mentioned. A lot of the guys have, have really liked that. It's a lot of one on one with the coaches. like. I mean, it's a little different when you're in person and when you're rushing, you have class and all these type of things. And with that time off, we got to really just focus on a lot of football and a lot of body improvements, eating habits, all these type of things that Coach Scholes is instilling in all of us. So yeah, it was uh, it was good. I think we learned a lot in that time and we're a lot further ahead than we were last year. And just uh, the, the other question was just like this, when did you kind of feel right? Oh yeah. When did you feel right? I mean, what did you feel you learned from that experience? It's kind of just taking all that time off. Mm. Yeah, I mean, feeling right, I'd say like 100% ready to go. Like I could have played a game like when we were doing spring ball and like in March, I feel like I was ready to go. That was like right at my six month, five month mark of being able to come back from that injury. So uh, I feel like I was ready to go then. And yeah, right now I'm just feeling really good. And yeah, it's it's I've learned a lot about my body and and gotten a lot better habits of taking care of my body during the season, during the off season, working out what works for me, what doesn't. So yeah, I've taken a lot of strides in that and I'm a lot more comfortable. Go to Don Williams. So Jack, what, what is the uh, hardest part of uh, coming back into the lineup with all the downtime that you've had with the reps that you missed in the spring of 19 and then in the season and then uh, we're going to Yeah, I mean, I love to play ball, so I just get out there and I feel real comfortable and with next to these guys and in this offense. And yeah, I just feel that uh, it is a lot like riding a bicycle. Like once you know how to play, you know how to play, and like once your body's feeling good, I just just ready to go out there and and uh, play some, put some good stuff on film. But I didn't miss much in the spring. Like I was, I was in pads in the spring. Um, doing a lot of drills, all the inside stuff, and we only got to practice a few times. So I feel like I didn't really have much of a like a issue there at all. And how many surgeries have you had now? Just two. Two, okay. Yes, sir. How have you uh, felt with those reps that you've gotten at center? Uh, I love it. I mean, I, I think I can use my leadership skills there a lot, a lot of communication. Uh, I think I have like a good build for a center. Like I can play all three positions, and at the next level, I'm thinking that that's what I'll do is play all three positions inside. So I think it just helps my versatility and helps me understand the offense better. So I'm happy that I'm in there. And yeah, Coach Farmer's been been uh, really teaching me a lot, and 
Same with Dawson. I mean, obviously, I'm really close with him already, so it's been easy to just sit down and talk with him about anything that I'm seeing and what he's seeing and compare. And yeah, I think we just got two guys that can can elevate each other that, at that spot. So uh, you and Dawson and Weston are kind of the guys back who have starting experience. Uh, outside of you three guys, who is an offensive lineman to keep an eye on that uh, you predict people will, will hear from this season that's going to do good things? Yeah, I got to keep an eye on. I'd say Zach Adams. I mean, dudes came here and he's had some some injuries and he's had some time off in there and he's he's learned a lot of the offense. He's taken more of a leadership role now and physically he's better than I've ever seen him before in my first three years here. And uh, yeah, he's 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 really into it right now. So yeah, I think that's a guy that you'll see at one of the tackle spots and he's competing really good out there.